Hi, I'm Kristen from Hammock Haven Farm, and we're back, finally. Thank you to everybody for your patience waiting on us uh, to get through with our dry spell and then kidding season. Um, we are almost done kidding now for the year, and it has been insanity out there. We have 16 doe kids and 10 buck kids so far, um, with two more mamas left to go. So, little kids everywhere, we'll have to get some video of that. Um, I want to thank you also my subscribers. Um, Y'all, this really helps us a lot. So if you haven't subscribed, please click that button down on the bottom um, and subscribe to us. It, it really is going to help us to keep bringing these videos to you. So today we are talking about cheddar. And cheddar, while it's like, I think, the most popular cheese, if, if not mozzarella because, you know, pizza, but um, probably like the second most popular cheese in the United States. And it's one of the hardest cheeses to make. I mean crazy. I've struggled and struggled and struggled to make a decent cheddar. Um, it's kind of all about meeting certain acid levels at certain times and if you don't get it, it comes out too dry and crumbly. If you, anyway, um, so I cut into a cheddar that I made 627 of last year, 17, and this is all that's left of it. You see we kind of devoured this. This was an eight pound or eight gallon cheddar and it's phenomenal. It is just delicious. I mean, the texture's nice. The sharpness is beautiful. It's starting to get those, um, those calcium crystals in it, which just give it those little crunchies, which are so delicious. Um, it's got, I, you know, I could have pressed it a little more for a less open texture, live and learn. Um, but it's just, the texture is creamy and beautiful and the flavor is amazing. So we're gonna do this today. Um, so let me clean this up, let's get our milk in the pot, and we're gonna do another eight gallon stirred curd cheddar. We have eight gallons of milk in this pot, and I first sterilized the pot. I like to boil water uh, in the pot with the lid on for several minutes just to make sure that everything is good and sanitized. Um, eight gallons of milk, we heated it up to 88 degrees. I usually turn the heat off when we get within a degree and a half of that because the residual heat in the bottom of the pot is going to bring the milk up the rest of the way and that way we don't go over temperature. Uh, the recipe that I'm going to use is loosely based off of the one in this book. Excuse me, I kind of trashed this book. It way dripped all over the counter and like ruined it, but it still works. So um, we're going to do the stirred curd cheddar from this book, but I'm making a couple little changes. Um, this calls for a two gallon recipe. I'm doing eight gallons here. Um, now, if you want to do two gallons, you can just cut your recipe down and cut all of these amounts down that I'm doing by a quarter. Um, I just find that a smaller cheese doesn't age as well as a big cheese. It just never does. So while I'm doing it, I want to do the big thing. Um, this calls for, for two gallons, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture. I'm going to use this um, MM100 culture. And since I today actually started with warm milk, half warm milk from this morning's milking and half cold milk from the refrigerator, um, I'm going to cut my culture a little bit even more. So for this eight gallons, um, I'm going to go ahead, instead of using half a teaspoon, I'm going to use just a little more than a quarter teaspoon on this. Um, I'm also using raw milk. And when I started really having success with my hard cheese is when I started using less culture uh, with my milk. Um, I was all the time getting way too much acid development. So let's sprinkle about a quarter teaspoon of that on the surface. And we're gonna let it rehydrate for about five minutes before we stir it in. Um, and we'll be back to stir that in once it rehydrates. This is rehydrated for about five minutes now. I'm gonna use my ladle and using an up and down motion like this, I'm just gonna work that culture in there and we'll stir it for about 30 seconds or so, going around to make sure that it works all the way through our milk. And once we've done that, we're going to set a timer for an hour and just leave it to sit here to ripen. So that's it for now, and we'll see you in an hour. This has been ripening for an hour now, and I'm going to choose to use annatto for some um, yellow color or orange color to this cheese. I like my cheddar orange. That's optional. Um, so I'm going to put in half a teaspoon of annatto and I'm going to mix it in um, 
about a quarter cup of water here. Let me measure. My rooster's making a fuss out there. No, they don't just crow in the morning. Ugh, this stuff makes a mess. All right, so mix this in here. And next we're gonna add the rennet. I like to use an animal rennet. I just think when cheese was traditionally made, that's what people used, and I just stick with that. So same up and down motion, mixing that in, and it'll mix in more once we add the rennet. So I'm gonna get another about half a teaspoon, or I'm sorry, half a teaspoon, quarter of, quarter cup of cool water here. Uh, this is another place that we're gonna change this recipe. This recipe calls for one teaspoon of rennet for a two gallon batch. So that would be four teaspoons of rennet. And I'll tell you right now that it's going to be way too much rennet and give us a um, just like bitter aftertaste of this cheese. So I'm gonna cut this to just shy of two teaspoons of rennet. And that ought to be plenty to get us what we're going for without that flavor. I just find when they add too much, it kind of gets a bitter aftertaste to it, which I don't like. But that should be plenty enough to set this amount of milk. All right, once we mix that in really well, let's see how long it tells us to let it sit for 45 minutes to coagulate. And all through this, we need to maintain the temperature of 88 degrees, um, just the bulk of this milk and being left in this big pot on the stove. The stove is off, but all the residual heat, um, you see it's maintained, it's not showing 88 degrees on there. All right, so mix that up and we'll see you in about 45 minutes to cut these curds. This has been 45 minutes now, and as you can see here, we've got a, a clean break on this. Um, you see the le level of whey on the top, and then if you come in here, these curds are ready to be cut. So I'm going to take my long knife here. We're going to cut these into half inch cubes. So first I do a cut one way across. And we'll fast forward this for you so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Because it does take a while. Okay, now we're going to go at a 90 degree angle and go the other way. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as close as you can get them, because we want the curds to lose moisture at an even rate, which is not going to happen if they're all different sizes. Okay, now I'm going to use the ladle to make a horizontal cut going down. This is more difficult than the vertical cuts, but you just want to go down half an inch with each one and cut the layer all the way across. Um, so take your time and do the best you can. When we get to stirring up these curds a little bit, we can go back and cut things that didn't quite get cut. It gets pretty tricky down at the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is let these sit for five minutes just to have their edges uh, firm up just a little bit so they're not so fragile. Um, and after five minutes, I'm going to give it a, a quick little stir and try to break up the things that are on the bottom a little better into even pieces. See you in five. It's been about five minutes now, and I'm just going to pull up these curds from the bottom. And you can see you know, where it got right down on the bottom how they just didn't get cut into short enough lengths. So I'm going to go through and just kind of
gonna make sure everything is cut consistently, gently. And once we're done with that, this needs to sit for 20 minutes just to let these curds lose some moisture and firm up some more. Now we need to raise the temperature to start cooking these curds. We want the target temperature to be 98 degrees. Um, and we need to keep stirring the whole time that we do this. So I'm going to turn my heat on and we want to just slowly and gently stir. If we see any big pieces, you can go ahead and um, continue to break them up. But over 30 minutes, we want to get this up to 98 degrees. So that's um, just a few degrees a minute. We're at 86 degrees now. So stay tuned. Okay, it's been 30 minutes now and I've got this up to 98 degrees. And if you take a look, you can see how much smaller the curds have gotten. But they still have that custardy middle to them. So now we need to hold the temperature at 98 degrees and stirring occasionally throughout this so it doesn't mat together. Um, wait uh, 30 to 45 minutes just stirring periodically uh, until they lose the custard-like center. I mean, you can see how it's, it's still, if you broke it, it's still kind of got a juicy middle to it. And we need to dry all that out for it to age properly. So I'm going to check this in 30 minutes. Well, I'm going to stir it periodically, but we'll come back and look at it in 30 minutes and decide if it needs more time. Okay, we've had 15, um, 30 minutes go by here, and I'm kind of thinking this is going to need 13 more or 15 more. I've been stirring every couple of minutes just to make sure these curds stay loose and aren't clumped together. See, they're not clumped together at the bottom. But I want to show you like curds that I think are about right and other ones that are still a little juicy, a little custardy, and are going to need more time. Um, so let me pull up a scoop here. So you see this curd right here. Get that. If I break it open, and sometimes I just pop these in my mouth to tell, and if they've got just like a juicy, watery center, then they're not ready. So if I break that open, and you can see it's still got custardy center in there. It's still dripping away when I break it open. Pop that in my mouth. And let's pull out another one that's about ready. And there are still more in here that aren't quite ready than that are. All right, now look at this one. It's shrunk down even farther in size than that other curd that we looked at. And if we break it open, it's about the same texture throughout. So I'm going to give this another 15 minutes, stirring every two or three minutes just to keep them from clumping up. And then we'll check it again and see if it's ready to drain. All right, I think we're about done here. There are some that are still a little juicier. Like, look at that one. That's still a juicy curd. Um, I'm going to stir this for just another minute or so just to really dry these out the rest of the way. And then we're going to let these curds um, sink to the bottom of the pot and we're going to drain the whey off. And what's really nice about this pot is it's got a spigot over here and with the help of my strong teenage son, we can get it over to the sink to drain this way off and make it a lot easier than trying to scoop it out of here or pour it off. So we'll be back with you in a minute when we have the way off of these curds. We have drained all the way off and we put our curds in colanders and we need to let these drain. See there, still draining some here. We need to let these drain in here for 10 minutes and then we're going to go throw all these curds back in the empty pot and salt them. So 10 more minutes, see you then. Okay, 10 minutes these things have been draining. So I'm going to take them out of here and throw them back in the empty pot now. I'm going to set this way aside and you'll see why in a second. this one in that pot and remove this pot over on the counter where it's not quite so high for me to, to reach. Alright, now we're going to salt this. The recipe for the two gallons calls for four teaspoons of kosher salt. 
So I quadrupled the recipe, so it's 16 teaspoons, and doing math in my head, that's like five tablespoons plus another teaspoon. So let's figure this out. Um, I like to mix about half the salt in, and then come back and mix the rest of the salt in. That way it, it seems to absorb better. So I'm going to do three tablespoons, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put two and a third. And And I really liked this other cheese I made. It seems like a lot of salt, but um, two, it had a really nice salt level to me. Okay, three. I'm gonna break this up. My hands are clean. Just washed them about a dozen times. Let's break all this curd up. So when you add all the salt, at once, the salt tends to draw some of the whey out of your curds and doesn't absorb real well if you, oops, I'm flinging curds everywhere, doesn't absorb real well if you put it all in at the same time, so that's why I like to do half and half. Put this back up. This is the fun part. So I told you we're reserving that whey over there, and the reason is um, after this step we need to put the curds into our mold and start pressing it. And I like to wet my cheesecloth in the whey before I line the mold with it. That keeps the curd from getting stuck in your cloth if your cloth is nice and wet with the whey. So that's what I'm saving that for. All right, let's throw the other two and a half in there. Got to wash my hands again or I'm going to get my salt box off already. Okay, so two. There's one. Two and about a third. Not rocket science, just eyeballing it. I'm trying to break up these big chunks so that the uh, salt gets dispersed all the way through these. You kind of see on the bottom there where there's whey that's still been released now that I add the salt. Pretty good. Let's get, um, of course, we need to sample it. Mm, very good. Squeaky. Let's get our cheesecloth and line our mold. Mm mm mm. I love me some fresh curds. All right. Rinse my hands again. Okay, here's my cheesecloth, and I'm going to put this down in here. Ring it a little bit. I've got my great big mold here. Looking out the window. <laughs> Making fun of my cameraman. Who's also my son, and he does all the video editing. So a big shout out to Chase, who is amazing. All right. When I fill this mold this time, you saw on the one at the beginning of the video how it kind of had some open texture to it. So I'm going to try to pack these curds a little tighter as I fill the mold. And I'm going to make sure I get a lot of weight on this too. It was a delicious cheese, but to make a traditional cheddar, I'd like a little less openness to that texture, a little denser texture. So um, we'll see if we can't accomplish that this way. Spot to put this on the bottom. Use both hands. I know it seems like a lot of curds to fit in here. They're gonna fit. Just you wait. Oh, 
And sometimes you have to press it a little bit and then come back and add more, but I, I think this is going to fit real well. Got a good yield, looks like. Usually the milk earlier in the season doesn't quite have as many solids. Uh, we are early March right now, or mid-March actually, goodness, where's the time go? Uh, but most of my doughs freshened early February, so they're early in their lactation right now. And earlier in the lactation, they tend to have a little less butter fat and a little less protein that goes up uh, as their lactation progresses throughout the summer to where when you're making cheeses in the fall, they're like, there's some serious creamy cheeses. Lots of butter fat in those. So we're on early, early lactation milk. I don't know that this, packing this down anymore is going to make that big of a difference in the final product, but you don't know till you try it, right? Almost there. The end is in sight. Got to leave some in the bottom here for me to snack on while I cook dinner. Not too many because I don't want to spoil dinner. Mm -hmm. oh, leave, some, leave some for Chase. Okay, we're going to leave what's in there for us to snack on. So now I'm going to wrap my cloth over the top here. You see that? Oops. Smooth it out. And I'm going to grab my follower, which I have over here. I got stuff all over the counter right now. Got milk out to feed the bottle kids and stuff out to start dinner. So I usually try to keep it a little more tidy than this for these videos, but we live here in between doing this. Okay, now is the fun part. I'm going to drip this all the way across my floor. Actually, I'm going to try to get these up here, maybe carry this. No, I'm going to drip it all over the floor. All right, are we ready? One, two, three. I have my uh, cheese press set up over here, and I like to line it with aluminum foil. It's on a cookie sheet, so it can't just drip all over the counter. And then I line it with aluminum foil so that all the wood doesn't get all wet, and put a little dish here to catch the whey. So now that we got that done, I can pull this out. And then I like to take another mold, and I'm going to have to adjust the press here to fit it up in there. But I find that this doesn't, this part doesn't really fit inside the follower. And so I don't get a good press if I don't put another mold on top. It's just what works for me. So, let me adjust this. And I think I just adjusted it the wrong way because I'm having a blonde moment, y'all. Right. Let's try that again. Thanks for bearing with me as I'm struggling. There. there. Now, see that reaches up higher. Did I tell you I'm having, having issues? All right. Let's try, try this for a third time. There we go. Okay. And we're in. So, I'm real quick, before I put a follower on there, you see all this weight that's dripping out already? It's a little milky. I'd like to see a clearer way because this is um, butter fat that we're losing. But hopefully, as we get the press on there and start pressing it, that'll clear up a little bit. I'm going to pour that out. And it says to start with 15 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes. So let's set that there. Rinse my hands. I'm going to get a weight to stick on there. I'm just going to use a five pound weight, which is going to be a little more than 15 pounds of pressure. I think my I think my lever here has got about a one to four, one to five ratio. Um, and there we go. So 20 minutes, we'll let that press and then we're gonna rewrap and flip the cheese. It's been 20 minutes, so I'm going to redress this cheese, which just basically means take it out. 
flip it, fix the wrap or fix the um, cheesecloth on it, and put it back in. So you can see the curds are starting to knit here, but they're still, you know, little pieces might break off. Flip that over. Smooth this back down on it. And this time, it tells you to increase the pressure to 30 pounds. So I'm just going to stick another weight on there. Get back in. You can do this. There we go. I'm going to stick another weight on there. And I think it says to do it for 30 minutes this time, but let me check. Let me check my recipe. Okay, in we go. All right, so it says, nope, this time 30 pounds at 30 minutes. And this is to help get all those little, you know, those little holes in the middle. If we started by pressing really hard right off, then all of those little air gaps in between our curds, they get sealed in there because you're gonna create a skin on the outside of your cheese. So by gradually increasing the pressure on this cheese, it's getting a chance for these curds to compress, that air to get out of there um, and make a, a denser, denser curd. At least, that's the, uh, at least that's the goal here. So we're gonna put that back on here. I, I do wanna point out now that we finished with that first, very first press, how clear the whey is here. So we're no longer losing butter fat that's another um, indication that you might be pressing too hard right off the right off the bat if you lose a lot of butter fat in your way. So I'm going to hang two weights up here and set it for 20 minutes. And we're going to come back, do the same thing, redress, increase weight. We're back. We're doing this again, redressing. So we're going to redress it again. Flip it. Put it back in with 30 pounds again for another two hours and then after that we're going to redress it and it says to put it in for 40 pounds for 24 hours i'm probably going to slap like 50 or 60 on this thing they tell me that you can't overpress a cheddar we're going to give that a try now again we're going to look at it and i might gradually increase the the um the weight that i put on there because I don't want to be pushing that butter fat out. So as long as my whey is clear, and I want you to look at how our rind is coming together, see how it's starting to knit. So the more time, the more weight, this is gonna, whoopsie, get all knit up. So you don't need to watch me put this back in the press. Um, we'll just be back, we'll do this in two hours. And sometimes I find I would rather redress it more often then have this stick at the end, so I probably won't leave this a full 24 hours without redressing it another time. I'll probably um, get up in the morning and redress it again, <laughs> just to make sure stuff doesn't stick. We'll be washing that too. All right, so at this point, I will see you in the morning. When we redress it, we check it, and then I will see you again tomorrow evening when it's time to take this baby out and see how she looks. Well, I lost my cameraman this weekend. So you're just going to have to bear with me. Um, this is the cheese. I pulled it out of the mold after 24 hours, pressing it pretty high. Uh, I'd say I put about 60 pounds on it. Um, this has been sitting on the counter now, and it's almost about ready to wax. And hopefully in nine months, it'll look like that one in the beginning of the video. Thank you guys for watching. And again, please hit that subscribe button on the bottom. It really does help us.